Well, the first tip's really about understanding your charity's finances and remembering that it's not about individual decision making. The board of trustees as a whole have a collective responsibility to come to decisions about their investments. And that's a reminder really that it's not just about the finance committee. The finance committee might make recommendations, but it's then about the board of trustees really coming to that collective view. So one of the most important things to do when investing for a charity is actually look to see what you can invest in. Um, where do you look for this? Well, you look at your governing document. Um, if there's anything you can or can't invest in or anything specifically that you should or shouldn't be doing, it may well be stated within this document. Um, what else you can and can't invest in might come down to the, the legal form of the charity. So depending on whether you are a charitable trust or a skew, the legislation behind that may also determine what you can and can't invest in. Trustees need to make sure that any investment decisions they make must be in the best interest in the charity. As such, it's a good idea to record the pros and cons of any investment decision that might significantly impact upon the charity. Well, this tip is all about thinking about your reputation as an asset and an asset to be protected and preserved. And that, in an investment context, means taking time to think about what role ethical investing might play in terms of your charity's reputation and protecting that. So if you have taken the decision to invest as a charity, uh, the next step might be to decide whether or not you need any advice or help in making those investment decisions. And whether you need help or not might depend on the makeup of your charity board, uh, whether you do have any trustees with specific knowledge, bearing in mind it is an equal duty and responsibility of all trustees. Um, if you do need that advice, then where do you go to for it? And uh, there are independent financial advisors, there are banks, uh, there are investment firms that specialise in providing advice to charities. So there is lots of advice out there. It's just making sure you go to the right places, that advice is proportionate and is cost effective given what you're trying to do. It's a very good practice for charities to actually record any investment decisions they make, to note them down and to remember to include them in the annual report and accounts. Thinking about your charity's purposes and how to connect that with your investments, I think this is a sign of how things have moved on. At one stage, charities may have thought about their investments really in isolation from what the charity really was there to do in terms of its mission and purpose. But things now, there's a possibility of connecting much more closely the charity's finances and its investments and delivery of what it's really trying to do, what its aims are. So tip number seven really is all about just thinking about your purposes in the context of your investments. So traditionally when a charity invests, um, it has all been about financial returns, um, how much financial return you can generate for the, for the risk that you are taking. Uh, today, um, many more charities are talking about social returns, environmental returns, other types of returns that, that can be generated. It may be in deciding to invest that you're looking for a range of returns, so yes you're looking for that financial return, but you're also looking for a return perhaps that will help to further the purposes of the charity, um, or indeed a social or environmental return. Uh, regardless of what type of return you're looking for, uh, the purpose of investing ultimately has to be to advance your charitable purposes. Although trustees may have the powers to delegate investment decisions to an investment manager, what you must never forget is that ultimately it is the trustee's responsibility to make investment decisions.
it's important for charity trustees to stay up to date as well. And there's lots of ways to do this. There's events, free training, free seminars, in particular every November during Trustees Week when various things are held around Scotland. But of course, with the internet, there's lots available online to be able to, just at the click of a button, stay up to date with whether it's blogs or new updates. For example, Oscar's own blog site as a source of helping you as a trustee keep on top of what's happening.